No, he just said Buenas. I said Buenas. He said Buenas. Good. <laughs> um, your first name? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to hear you. Uh, you know, it's always um, a pleasure. It's always good to see people at God's house. Welcome home. And you are you who are uh, watching by the internet. Welcome home. Welcome. And we're going to start worshiping the Lord. I don't know how was your week. I don't know uh, the situation that you've been through. But it's one thing I know. We are now safe in God's house. So please join, join us standing. And what about saying to the person next to you, maybe hello. Good morning, buenos dias. Say hello to the person uh, beside you. And you are in your house. Do, it, do that too. Uh, say hello to the person next to you. And the band and we are going to worship the Lord and you're going to take advantage of that, okay? Vamos, maestro. Help us with your hands. This is amazing grace. Come on, say. Who break the power of sin and darkness? Who love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King of all kings. Bless 
noche en mí Oh, sí, señor Come on, say Digno, digno Digno es el Cordero de Dios Digno es el Rey La muerte venció Dios. Digno es el Cordero de Dios Digno es el Rey La muerte venció Say, worthy, worthy Anybody thankful today for amazing grace? Nobody? Anybody thankful for amazing grace? Now why don't we say that together? One, two, three. Amazing grace. Can do better. One, two, three. Amazing grace. Wow. Thankful to the Lord this morning for his amazing grace in my life, in the life of my family, your lives, the life of our church. We have lots to be thankful for today, don't we? Well, today you guys came to a great service because today at this service, I get to introduce you guys to a new little member of our church family. So let me just explain for you quickly what I mean by that. Uh, those of you who are here in the building and those of you who are joining us online, here at Crossroads, we give our families an opportunity, if they would like, to at some point, uh, sometimes not too long after their children are born and sometimes a little longer afterwards, but whenever they would like, if they would like to bring that child up to the front so that the rest of the church family can meet him or her, and we have a moment to pray together, especially for that child, we give our families opportunity to do that. So not everybody does, and you don't have to, and the Bible doesn't say you have to, but a lot of families here like to do that. 
So today we have a young couple who has had their first child. It's a beautiful, beautiful little girl. Her name is, it's a beautiful name too, beautiful name, Irina. Irina, isn't that a beautiful name? Irina. Her parents' names are, what are you guys' names? <laughs> Andres and Marie Claire, but the star of the show today is Irina, right? So come on up, guys. Let's introduce Irina to our church family. She just looks like a little doll, right? Man. Yeah, could we maybe just all do that together? I'll count to three and let's just all do ah uh, so we can get that out of our system, okay? One, two, three. Ah, uh, okay. Hi. You know they're doing that for you? <laughs> yeah? So I don't always, especially, you know, during COVID times, have the opportunity to hold the kids in my arms when I get to pray for them. But Andres and Marie Claire uh, volunteered this. I didn't even ask. They said, if you'd like to hold her, you can. So I'm a little out of practice because it's been probably two years, you know, during the pandemic that I haven't had the opportunity to do this. But I'm going to try, all right? If she hoots and hollers, I'll give, him, give her quickly back to her dad. But I like to try to hold her while I pray for her. I want to look at her. I don't care if you guys get to see her or not. <laughs> so we're just going to take a moment as a church family and pray for this beautiful little gift from God. Psalm 127.3 says, children are a gift from God. And she's a beautiful little gift to her family and to our family here at Crossroads. So let's thank God for her and let's pray for her. Sound good? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the gift of this beautiful, beautiful baby girl, Irina. Thank you for her parents and for her extended family that love her and cherish her and want her to grow up knowing about you and loving you and serving you. So many children today who are not privileged to grow up in those kinds of families and Thank you today. Thank you this morning for Irina's family. I pray especially for her parents, for Andres and Marie Claire, as they seek to raise her in your ways in an environment that's pretty tough right now, in a world that's broken down. I pray that you will give them strength and courage and wisdom and patience and everything that they need to raise her in your ways. God, we pray that at a really, really young age, Irina will understand that she needs Jesus as her Savior and that she would accept him by faith as her Savior and that she would grow up to be a, a woman who loves you and serves you with all of her heart and makes a difference in this world for you. Thank you for her beautiful eyes, for her beautiful smile, for her happy disposition. And I pray, God, that she will be an incredible influence for you and for your kingdom as she journeys through life. So bless her abundantly, protect her, guard her, take care of her. And we thank you for her today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, she smiled like almost the whole time. It was incredible. So congratulations, guys. So don't clap yet. I'm going to do the transfer here. And then I have a couple of things for mom. And then we can give another big round of applause. Okay, so here I have, first of all, a beautiful certificate that the church office prepared this week so that someday Irina can remember this moment. So there's the certificate. And then here is a letter that is from me to her. It's a personal letter. It's sealed and it's to be opened on October 26th. Listen to this. Year 2034, which is her 13th birthday. So she already has her first 13th birthday present. There you go. All right. Fuerte el aplauso.
Good morning, family. Good morning. It's really nice to see the sanctuary full of people like you, that you wanted to be here worshiping God. And I think probably for the first time in the last two years, we have to open that one. At least it's the, the first time I remember watching that one. We want to welcome you here and also the one who are through our YouTube channel. And during this week, I have a conversation with a couple of people. And probably, and they talk to me and say, you know, Diego, what Pastor Steve told us last Sunday made me think about it. And I don't know for you, it is my hope, that during the whole week you have been able to think about the specific initiative that we as a leaders of the church, we are going to take. We are reinventing, but basically is, and we call the leadership is, let's cross to the other side. And basically what it says is that we are trying to pass from point A, that we are, I'm sorry my English, moderately effective making disciples to a point B that we need to be highly effectively making disciples. Basically, what we want as a leader is that all of you will, welcome, will become to be an amazing ma disciple makers. And basically, to fulfill the Great Commission, that in Matthew 28, specifically verse 19, say, go and make disciples. But probably you will be in agreement with me, but in order to make disciples, we first need to tell the people who doesn't know Jesus, who is Jesus, and what he did for us on the cross. It's the first step. And basically, that is evangelize. Then, in order to make disciples, and what we want is, we want to take the whole congregation, every single one of you, from a great C, is 75 points, to a great A+, 95 or more. Then, when it comes to me, it comes to my mind, and pop up into my mind a question. If it is easy or hard evangelize for you. And let's do something different. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. And I want you, those who believe that evangelize is really easy, Raise your hand. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to ask those who think that evangelizing is really hard, raise your hand. Then my question is those who say it's easy, why is easy? And those who say it's hard think why is hard. And you're going to have the whole sermon, the whole service. And after that, I'm going to ask five brave volunteers to come with me. I'm going to record that question. If it's easy, why? If it's hard, why? And we will see next week the answer of the people. Okay? Next, I want you to remind, last week we start, those who are called to support the short-term short mission trip in the, next, in the second semester, that wanted to fill a piggy bank 
When you're going to be leaving, you can take one. Please, two things. Take it if you're going to do it. If no, don't worry. And we are not going to be mad, nothing like that. No worries. And it's going to be, please, before August. We have until August to receive the piggy banks. And now we're going to be praying, as you know, probably you remember, in the, mar in the month of February, we're praying for Rachel. This month, she is our worker that we're going to be praying for. Also, I want to pray, first, to give thanks to God for all the members of the congregations who right now are in good health, that they have been healed by Jesus. And also, I want you to be praying with me for those who are still in sickness, any kind of sickness. A lot of people here has COVID. There is people who had cancer, heart problems, any kind of problems. And I'm going to ask you, please join me in pray. Heavenly Father, I want to give you thanks. First, for all my brothers and sisters that are here. Thank you, Lord, because they want to hear your voice through the Pastor Steve's door. Thank you, Lord, because you have a special message for them today. Thank you, Lord. I want to give you for Rachel and her co-worker, Katie. Thank you, Lord, because they were obedient and accept the call to go. Lord, I want to ask for a safe trip back to the village that they can return in a good way, Lord. Lord, I want to ask you for the people that was trained by them. Thank you, Lord, that the, all the training stayed in, her, in their hearts and in their minds, that the Holy Spirit put really deep in there, that they can be a really good translators of the Bible. Lord, I want to give you, I want to ask you for wisdom, for the translation of the Bible that Rachel and Katie are doing right now to the now world language. Lord, I want to ask you for Rachel and for Katie's health. Lord, that Katie recover completely for COVID, Lord and cover Rachel, that nothing happened with her. And also, Lord, I want to ask you for the people that stayed in the village, that they were the leaders of the people, that they were trying to show that Jesus came to earth for them. Also, Lord, I want to ask you for, first, I want to give you thanks for the people who recover from any kind of Seek, Lord. Lord, I want to ask you also, for the people that right now are sick, any kind of sick, we know that you are God, that you are sovereign, that you can put your hands in there, and the sick is going to disappear, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, silence, wow, can you join us standing? You know God, we were singing about God's um, amazing grace, but because His amazing grace, we can declare what the um, following song says. His love never fails. Okay? I can fail. The person next to you can fail. But God, man, God never fails. So that's what we're going to sing. Okay? Maestro.
Dígale, eres el mismo, no cambias.
cosa es indescriptible, difícil de expresar. Sé tus obras, tus obras son incomprensibles. No hay nadie como tú, Señor. ¿Quién podrá entender tu sabiduría? ¿Quién podrá medir tu profundo amor? Tu belleza es indescriptible. In God, I feel like I don't know if you have this saying in English, but I feel like fish in the water, como pez en el agua. But one of the things I love to see, love to hear, is God's people worshiping. I love hearing the, your voices joining us in worship and praise. And if I feel like that, like this. I don't, I don't know. God should be feeling, you know, wow, amazed. And I don't know if you, um, this week, week before, I don't know, God did something that, you know, amazed you. How many of you have been amazed by God? You know, you're waiting for something and God to, you know, exceeding above you know 
And I think we should finish this worship time just singing this, this chorus. I stand in awe of you because we were, we were condemned. We didn't have any hope. And God did the difference. God makes the difference in our lives. So I don't know about you, but we are going to say, And I stand, I stand. I stand, I stand, I stand in all you, holy God, to whom all praises, I stand in all of you. You are your home, say, I stand. God. Holy God, to whom all praises do, I stand in awe of you. Let us finish this time. Say, I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand. Maravillado estoy, maravillado estoy. I stand, I stand in Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, because you do exceeding abundantly above what can, we can ask or thank, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for who you are in our lives, Lord. Thank you, for, because we, we have where to go when we feel like everything is going the other way. We have where to go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you because you're listening to us, Lord. Thank you for your word that we'll be preaching. This morning we open our hearts, our eyes, our ears, and expecting, expecting from you words of life. We love you, we trust you, and we praise you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Would you guys like to express your appreciation to our music team as they leave the stage today? Thank you, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate it. What a privilege to be able to be in a place where we can lift our voices in praise and worship through song without worrying about making too much noise. Complete freedom. Wow, that's, that's an incredible gift. Well, welcome to each and every one of you, whether you're here physically present in the building or joining us online this morning. Uh, young, not so young, Formal member of Crossroads, first time visitor, regular attendee. Welcome to each and every one of you to our weekly Sunday family gathering. We're really happy and honored to have you here with us today, whether in person or online. Last Sunday here at Crossroads at our gathering, 
we kind of officially kicked off or maybe announced to our family a 2022 initiative or project or journey that we're going to be on here all year. We've chosen to entitle it in Spanish, Crucemos al Otro Lado, and in English, Let's Cross to the Other Side. The reason for this initiative this year is that the leaders of Crossroads feel strongly that over the course of the last couple of years during the pandemic, we've kind of lost some momentum, if maybe I can use that terminology, in terms of really accomplishing with excellence our mission of, well, what is our mission? Making disciples making many disciples, raising up a multitude of totally committed followers of Jesus. So that's why we exist, and we feel like we've just kind of lost some momentum in that important mission. And so we want to focus some serious energy and attention this year here at, at the church on doing a better job. Moving from point A to point B, moving from being maybe moderately effective right now at making disciples to a place where we could really, for you know, the honor and glory of God, say we're highly effective as a church family in making disciples. So last Sunday, uh, among other things, I gave you guys an invitation to participate in a survey, which we think will be helpful for us as we begin this journey. I want to thank you this morning to all of you who have been able to do that over the course of this past week. I don't have the latest numbers, but I think as of this morning, we were reaching about 400 filled out surveys, which is awesome. I think the survey will be open until midnight tonight. So if you still haven't filled it out and would like to help us by doing that, you still have a few hours left. You can use that QR code that's on the banners here and it will take you right to that survey. So thank you so much for all of you who have taken time to do that. In addition to some other things that we already kind of have planned and are thinking about and what we'll learn from you guys, from your feedback and other plans that we'll make, I started thinking, knowing this was all coming this year, I started thinking back in October about how my participation here on Sundays could be helpful in this kind of reinvention process as we seek to do a better job of effectively making many disciples. So I began to think and pray and ponder and dream and talk to other people about maybe what book of the Bible we could go on a journey through together here on Sundays. And I landed on the book of Acts, the book of Acts. So why did I land on the book of Acts? Well, let me tell you, um, Acts is really part two of a two-part book called Luke-Acts. The Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts were written by the same person, Dr. Luke. And in his first volume, the Gospel of Luke, Luke records Jesus' life from the time he was born until the time that he was crucified rose again and ascended to his Father in heaven. About three year period covered in the Gospel of Luke. Then in the book of Acts, Dr. Luke picks up the story after Jesus' ascension and relates the story of approximately the first 30 years of the church after Jesus went back to heaven. And the most incredible thing about the book of Acts is that when we read that book, we discover that in the first 30 years of the church, from the time it was born on the day of Pentecost until about 30 years later, the church exploded numerically. It went from a, a small handful of kind of frady cat <laughs> believers, followers, to thousands and thousands and thousands of courageous Jesus followers who were talking about Jesus everywhere they went. How did that happen? How did that happen? And I thought to myself, maybe if we could together, as we journey through Acts, uncover some principles that would help us as we 
embark on our journey of trying to do a better job as a church family of effectively making a lot of disciples. So I think, I think we're going to discover as we journey together over the next few weeks or many weeks, I think we are going to discover together some important principles that can help us, that can guide us as we seek to take this journey in 2022 of moving from being what I think right now I would express as moderately effective at making disciples to being highly effective. So you're welcome to join us on the journey. That's what we will be doing here. That's what we'll be talking about from the Bible uh, every week here at Crossroads over the next few months. So it probably won't surprise you that today we're going to start in chapter, well, what chapter of Acts do you think we're going to start with today? A one. Oh, excellent. Some of you still are awake. So chapter one. So get a Bible open to Acts chapter one. As you're doing that, could you take a look at this incredible slide? Isn't that like amazing? People who are creative just blow my mind. So the person who made this slide for us, you know who you are. And I won't embarrass you publicly, but thank you so very, very much. I think that's just an amazing slide and logo. Book of Acts chapter 1. Chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 1 this morning, we are going to quickly, briefly discover a really interesting and important answer to the following question. What... Are we as Jesus followers supposed to be doing while we wait for Jesus to come back? Okay. I'm going to say that again. What are we as Jesus followers supposed to be doing while we wait for Jesus to come back? So let's start reading. Acts chapter 1. I'll start at verse 1, obviously. And this morning I will be reading from the New Living Translation. And here's how it reads. It says, In my first book I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. So if you're familiar with the Gospel of Luke, you're already hearing echoes of Luke chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 in your mind, right? Verse 3, during the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. This is a summary. If you want details of this, you can read the Gospel of Luke, right? Luke is here quickly summarizing. He's making a transition between Luke and Acts. Once, verse 4, once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So it's a reminder of something that Jesus had told his followers before he went back to heaven. You can read about it in the Gospel of Luke if you want to go back and read the details. So, verse 6, when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. So here we are reminded that Jesus' disciples really wanted to know like when, like a day and time, like a time frame for when the Messiah would come and really free Israel. They were thinking on a very kind of human level of being freed from Roman oppression. Jesus, when he answered them, obviously thinking not on a human, let's get free from Rome level, but on a kingdom of God, a spiritual plane, responds to them, you know what, guys? 
the day and the time when Messiah is going to come and put order to everything, that's not for you to know. <laughs> no les toca saber eso. That detail isn't for you guys to know. But there is something that I do need you to know. He goes on. He says, those dates and times are not for you to know, but, so, kind of transition instead, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So, I know you guys want to know when, but that's not for you to know. So that's not what you should be tuned up with. What you need to do is you need to wait like I told you in Jerusalem to receive the power of the Holy Spirit and then what you need to do while you wait is you need to tell everybody about me wherever you go. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. And that's not coincidence, that little list of four. That little list represents, maybe I would call it like concentric circles of geography and even culture. Maybe you could visualize, have you ever thrown a stone into a, a smooth lake and you see how it ripples out? So Jerusalem is the city where they were located and supposed to wait, right? Until the Holy Spirit came and gave them power. And then they were supposed to talk about Jesus all over the place in Jerusalem in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then not only in Jerusalem, but they were to spread out to Judea, which is a region, an area in which Jerusalem is located. So we're getting bigger geographically. And then to Samaria, which is another region farther away from Jerusalem, not only geographically, but culturally as well. For the Samaritans represented really a very different culture than the Jews. And after Samaria, the next kind of circle out is to the ends of the earth. Obviously, they didn't have in their minds the Americas where we live. They didn't know that the earth was as big as we now know that it is, but the ends of the earth to them would have been places like Spain, the Roman Empire. And so Jesus tells them, don't worry about the time, the date, when, Messiah is going to put everything right. Just while you wait for that to happen, everywhere you go, tell people about me. Tell people about Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit. And then we come to verse 9. We read, after saying this, Jesus was taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring up into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. So verses 1 through 11 of Acts chapter 1 are a very quick, general, brief summary of things that Luke had already written about in his gospel. Things that happened during Jesus' life until the moment he went back to his Father in heaven. And then in verse 12, we read what happened afterwards. Verse 12 says, then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. 
And here are the names of those who were present. And we have a list of names. And if we had more time today, and we don't, but you could do it at home if you want, you can read through the end of the chapter and you would see that they did obey Jesus' command to wait in Jerusalem. There was a group of about maybe up to 120 of them, and they followed Jesus' instructions to wait. And then something incredible happened. You have to come back next Sunday as we look at chapter 2 to see what that is. And I hope you'll do that. As I think about these verses from Acts chapter 1 and I think about that question, what are we as Jesus followers supposed to be doing while we wait for Jesus to come back? The way I kind of put into summary terminology the answer to that question is this. As we wait for Jesus to return, we are to tell others about him everywhere we go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's let that sink in for a minute. As we wait for Jesus to return, we are to tell others about him everywhere we go in the power of the Holy Spirit. There is one very important difference that I need to remind you of today between what Jesus instructed his disciples to do when he was physically there with him and what we're supposed to do. And that difference has to do with the Holy Spirit and his role. If you're familiar with the Bible, I'm sure you will remember that in Old Testament times, and even during the time that Jesus was on earth, and yes, up until the time Jesus left the earth, the way the Holy Spirit interacted with God's people was different than it is today. I'm sure you remember that the Holy Spirit did not live inside of God's followers like he does today. He would come upon them in certain moments for certain special occasions or tasks that needed to be accomplished. And the Holy Spirit would come upon people and empower them to accomplish that and then leave. You can read that in the pages of the Old Testament in the book of Judges, for example. You can read about David and others who were empowered by the Holy Spirit at moments to do certain things and then the Holy Spirit would remove. But it's different now. It's different. Jesus made reference to that in John 14, 17 when he said to his disciples, the Holy Spirit is now with you, but someday he will be in you. We can read in other parts of Scripture, for example, in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Romans 8, 11, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. Or I think of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? So there's a very important theme in the New Testament, which makes it very clear that people who have decided to become part of God's family by placing their faith in Jesus for their salvation, they are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. 
So today, if you are here and you have made the decision to place your faith in Jesus for your salvation, the Holy Spirit lives in you. You don't have to wait for him to come. He's there. The issue for us today is to surrender control to him. So the issue is a little bit different. And it's important to understand that. So as we wait for Jesus to come back in the power of the Holy Spirit, yielding control to the Holy Spirit, trusting the Holy Spirit, depending on the Holy Spirit, not on ourselves, we're supposed to tell people about Jesus wherever we go. It's kind of like, I don't know, if you're here today and you're a, a young person, a maybe an elementary school or adolescent or maybe teenager and you're living at home. Maybe mom and dad on occasion decide to go on some errands together. And they might say to you something like, while we're out doing your, our errands, we want you to, and then maybe they tell you to clean your room or do the dishes or make lunch or wash the car or whatever it is that they tell you to do. And between, between the time they leave and the time they come back, that's what you're supposed to do, right? So Jesus left. He's going to come back. And we're in that in-between time. And what are we supposed to do? In the power of the Holy Spirit, yielding control to the Holy Spirit, trusting the Holy Spirit, depending on the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to be telling people all the time, everywhere, about salvation through faith in Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Or maybe you're here today and you work at a company and your boss maybe would come to you some Friday afternoon and say, I'm going to be gone on a business trip all next week. And while I'm gone, I want you to, and he might tell you, well, uh, you know, do this project or do such and such. And he expects you to have that done by the time he comes back. So Jesus ascended to the Father, and he's going to come back. We don't know when, but until he comes back, while we wait for him to come back, in the power of the Holy Spirit, depending on the Holy Spirit, trusting the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to be telling people all around us, all the time, everywhere, about Jesus. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Given that idea, that principle, in my mind, bubbles up a really important thought question for me and for all of us, and it's very personal, actually. And here's the question. How often are we talking with the people around us about Jesus? If that's our task while we wait, if that's our tarea while we wait, if that's our responsibility, if that's what we're supposed to be doing while we wait for Jesus to come back, how are we doing? How am I doing? How are you doing, Juan? Have you talked to anybody this past week about Jesus? Did you talk to anybody in January about Jesus? That's what we're supposed to be doing as we wait for Jesus to come back. How are we doing? I have a friend here in Panama who has a personal goal of talking to somebody about Jesus every single day. And he's really serious about it. He carries tracts with him everywhere he goes. And sometimes that's as, as good as he can do. But it's something. He carries New Testaments with him everywhere he goes. And sometimes he can just give somebody a New Testament and encourage them to start reading them. Other times he has the opportunity to actually sit down with somebody over coffee and share the gospel. There are so many different ways, but he's really serious about doing what he's supposed to be doing 
while he waits for Jesus to come back. I think that's really admirable. Maybe some of us won't have the opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus every day. Maybe our environments or what we do every day doesn't allow that. Maybe every week, would that be too much of a goal for each of us? Even if it's just giving somebody a tract and asking them to read it and telling them that God loves them? Or maybe you could invite a coworker for coffee and figure out a way to bring up spiritual things? I found it so interesting that as I relate with people who need Jesus and ask questions about them and their lives so often, things come up which allow me to talk about Jesus with them. Almost everybody is struggling with something. And if we're interested enough in people, a lot of times that will come out and allow us to share with them about Jesus and the hope that he offers. Maybe it's a family member or a neighbor or some friend that you could have over for a meal and bring up spiritual discussion. There's so many ways to talk to people about Jesus in appropriate ways, but we have to be committed to doing it. And I think sometimes for me, maybe for some of you, it's easy to forget that. It's easy for the passion to wane. Today, I think we are being reminded that we need to step up. There are a lot of people in our church, it occurs to me, who really are involved in social media. That's not my world. I'm not saying it's a bad thing necessarily. It's obviously a double-edged sword. But if you're a person who loves to be on social media, how could you leverage social media to talk to people about Jesus? I had a young person in our church not too long ago blow my mind when he told me God put in his head, record an audio about Jesus and send it to your, all your contacts on WhatsApp, and he did it. <laughs> so maybe it's social media that you could use to talk to people every day or every week about Jesus. The point is that here at Crossroads, if we really want together to move from point A to point B, from being moderately effective in making disciples to being highly effective in making disciples, we have to be talking to people about Jesus. The first step towards somebody becoming a disciple is they have to hear the good news of the gospel and embrace it. And there begins the discipleship journey, right? Not everybody will respond positively. We know that. The scripture's clear about that. We can't convert anybody. We understand that. The results are up to God. Aren't we thankful for that? But we have to plant the seeds. I have to do better this year. Juan, you have to do better if together we want to move towards being more effective in making disciples than we've ever been. Ivan, you have to do better. Mike, Vim, Tracy, Mercedes, Tim, Tina, Ricardo, Ellie, Beto, Astrid, Julie. We have to do better. If we really want to be a place full of disciples, making disciples, we all have to step up. 
and be really, really aware and pendiente and committed to our task in the power of the Holy Spirit to share the gospel of Jesus with people around us. We don't have to be eloquent. We don't have to be particularly smart or articulate. I mean, we should do the best we can, but it's the Holy Spirit who makes it happen. Aren't you thankful for that? It's in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we rely on and depend on and lean into the Holy Spirit, we scatter the seed. And some people will say yes. I'm in. I'm asking God to help me do better this year than I've ever done. I'm not that smart. I'm not that gifted. I don't have the gift of evangelism. And my work here at the church keeps me largely in a bubble a lot of the time. I don't have that much contact on a daily basis with people who need Jesus. But I'm committed to do better with God's help. I don't know what that's going to end up looking like exactly. But I want to do better. Maybe some of you do too. I think so. I think so. And so I hope and pray that as we leave this place today that that thought will be rumbling around in all of our heads. How can I, tapping into the power of the Holy Spirit, do a better job than I've ever done before at just sharing Jesus with people around me who need him? That's what we're supposed to be up to as we wait for Jesus to come back. Got it? Let's pray. Father, thank you for these moments together here in your house, uh, physically and some over the internet as well. Thank you for your word, for the clarity with which it speaks. And uh, Holy Spirit, we cry out to you today for your help. Help us to know in a practical way, really what it means to surrender control to you and to lean into you and depend upon you and to have the courage that maybe only you can give us to open our mouths and to speak about Jesus in appropriate ways, yes, but all the time, everywhere, as much as we possibly can. God, help us with that, I pray. Thank you. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Thank you.